Electricast. Thanks for listening and subscribing to DIY for Business, a part of the best business network and Electricast Media. It's Russ and Greg with you. Greg, how's it going? It's going good. I had my groove on. <laughs> yeah, you did. I noticed that. Well, you know, I, I, I've, I've got a whole new setting here. I'm looking at you in a, in a whole new light, like literally, because I've completely reorganized the, uh, the office slash studio. And uh, it, it's so it's so interesting to like reorganize stuff like it, it just puts you in a whole different mindset. Like, I feel like I'm in a whole new place. It's so cool. It, it feels good, doesn't it? That's why, you know, that spring cleaning every year, I don't know, I don't, you don't have to wait till spring, but when you do it, it just makes you feel like re-energized and like, oh, I feel good in my space again. It really does. It's so different and nice. And then like all the little annoyances that I had, like where my mic was and all this stuff, it's like, it's, it's in a perfect spot. Like, I love it. And I can, I can push it out of the way nice and easy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so happy right now. It's great. <laughs> you, you've inspired me as you know, that, you know, I love the dance. I love the dance and, you know, before you every show or, you know, at the beginning of every show, I think now that I think about it, I think I'm going to put up a disco ball in my office. Uh, you know what? I have one in the studio. One? Really? Really? I oh. do. Okay. I actually, I actually have one in here as well. I have a small one. <laughs> actually, you would just add to the vibe, right? Yeah, yeah. I used to keep one in my old uh, in my old office uh, when when we were working together. Um, mm -hmm. I had one, in the, so I've got it in this office now. It's it's uh, it's it's not far away. I'm looking up at it right now. So I think us both having disco balls in our office. Disco balls, is, and uh, then I think I want some good. colored lighting going on. You know that that spinning colored light. What what do you call that? You used to have uh, one in your yeah, You know, business. there's so many different random names for those things. Like each company calls them diff something different. But yeah, you need one of those as well. I need yeah. one of those as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is going to totally change your opening dance with, with all the lights and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you know what? The thing is like, okay, you're doing, you're doing a lot of sales presentations these days, right? So I feel like. Once you get a sale, you could throw on the lights, like as a celebration. It's almost like a game show. Like yeah, when right. you make a sale, right? There's something <laughs> you like, hit a button. <laughs> survey says ding, 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 right? And like, you know, something flips up and, you know, score. Oh. Yeah, it, it's going to be love it. a whole production every time sales are oh, made. I love it. This is going to be exciting. I, I want to be a part of these calls. Well, I think, you know, every time a salesperson, you know, some people have like the bell, like they ring the big bell, like, ah, we made a sale. It's, it's something to make you energized, make you excited about making a sale. And, and you know, the congratulations, it's the high fives in the office, you know, now it's a virtual high five right, right. amongst the team. But sales is, is you know, very emotional. Yeah. It uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I find that sales is life. There's so mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. uh, that goes into a sale that is kind of like all the aspects of your life kind of filter in to how do you make a sale? And you know what? We have somebody with us today that is going to help us um, kind of with that transition. Chris Cassinus of chriscassinus.com. He is the president of Surf Financial Brokers, and he's the author of You're Going to Be Great at This, a sales memoir. Chris, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came about writing this book. Well, um, I have always been in sales. I mean, from the time I was a little kid, I was selling things, you know, as you do for school or organizations or whatever you do. And, and, um, when I got out of college, I really didn't have a lot of job prospects. So I went into sales, selling insurance door to door out in the middle of rural North Carolina. And, um, that was horrible. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I, I went into, uh, office supply sales and retail sales and all kinds of things. And eventually ended up back into insurance again. And I've been doing it for about a little over 20 years this time, uh, working with several companies and, and just learning 
what they do and how they do it. And then about 10, 12 years ago, I opened up my own agency and just completely independent. You know, I'm not obligated to anybody in particular. And, um, but at the same time, I wanted to uh, write this book and it was kind of a bucket list item for me. (laughs) So that's what I did. And just got out all my frustrations with the industry and how, you know, people, when you're applying for a job that's completely commissioned, you know, there's just a lot of promises made and, um, you know, you'll never be more than 30 minutes from your house. And of course you're driving home two hours, (laughs) things like that. And, um, it was, you know, everybody's going to love you and the product's awesome and you're going to make all this money. And then they always throw in, you're going to be great at this. And, um, and then you can't figure out why, you know, 90% of their, literally 90% of their people are gone, you know, within like three years, if they hired a hundred today, 10 might still be there. So there's a lot of that going on. I just wanted to get that out of my system and told a lot of funny stories about selling and, but it was also, um, I made the book to where it was, you could use the information in it. So there's things in there, how to you know, network properly and how to, you know, use sales techniques and, and as life hacks, you know, you can use them for basic, basically everything. So um, it, it was funny. I wrote it, I put it up on Amazon and immediately I started getting reviews from people that I knew that I hadn't solicited any reviews, but it was funny. They were, they were like, this is hilarious. And this is just the way you talk. Cause it's a bit, bit salty language in it. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a, a Zig Ziglar. <laughs> kind of book. It's, it's a PG 13 sales book. That's, that's a nice way to put it. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, and then, and then somebody told me, you know, you ought to do some speaking because I've been going to Toastmasters for years anyway. So I started doing a little bit of speaking and I was talking to some sales groups and uh, civic organizations locally and then COVID hit and um, all that's kind of been put on back hold, back on the back burner for a while. I'm starting to, you know, make myself available again. And if anybody's interested, they can find me. But that that's what I do is I, I just... Uh, when I'm not trying to sell insurance, I'm selling myself as a speaker. <laughs> nice, nice. That it's it's so much fun. Like I I love the whole speaking thing, the public speaking. It's just it's you know there's always you, you, no matter how long you've been doing it, there's a little bit of like fear there, right? Like there's there's a little bit of okay, can I actually do this? And then. I, I, at least I'm, I'm speaking for you. I'm, 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 for me, there's always been that. Uh, I just did a, a speech a couple of weeks ago that was, I don't know, uh, 400 people or so. I can't remember how many, you know, or I, I don't have a count on how many people, but it was a, it was, it was a, a bunch of people. And I, I wanted to warm up the crowd with a couple of jokes. I did a couple of jokes. I felt good about it. And it's like, once I did uh, the jokes, I had the microphone in hand. I just, I felt like, okay, I'm on, right? Like I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm out there. I'm, I'm doing it. I just, I get in the zone and I just have, have fun with it. It, it, It's sort of the same with sales though, right? Like when I was doing sales, it was sort of that same feeling. It's like, okay, I've got, I've got what I'm going to say. I've got, uh, you know, a pen. That's the important thing. I I don't know how many times I went to a sales presentation and forgot a pen. Like um, (laughs) they can't sign it if they don't have a pen. Uh, But like I would have all these things ready and I would be all set for it. But still, I, I think early on with, with salespeople, there's, there's a bit of, you know, it is selling for me. Like, can I do this? There's a, there's a bit of fear and sort of self-doubt. How did you get over that? And how do you, do you deal with that in the book on, on, on getting past that? Well, the, the biggest fear I think is, is um, sometimes it, de- it just depends, you know, if you're talking about cold calling, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, that's you true. know, when Good I point. when I sold when I sold uh, insurance out in the middle of nowhere, the the fear was you know not getting shot. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know the number one fear I think that people typically have is is the fear of rejection. You know, mm-hmm. if if you're just constantly getting told no and you're making a hundred percent commission, then you're making a hundred percent of 
absolutely nothing. So, plus it just hurts your feelings on top of it all. Right. So, you know, th- that's important because it, it just doesn't help your morale if you're, if you're constantly being told no. One of the things I tell people is when I was in college, uh, I would, I was single and would try to mingle as we say. And, um, <laughs> And I would go to clubs or bars and meet girls. And I would say, yeah, I thrive on rejection. Will you go out with me? And <laughs> that was, you know, it was my opening line that would save face because you were making it a win-win situation. You know? <laughs> so when you, so now all these years later, I just kind of keep that in the back of my mind sometimes when I'm talking to someone about insurance or whatever, I'm trying to sell them. And, I, you know, it's like, okay, if they say no, I'll still live. You know, you have to, have an emotional Teflon coating there. I don't know if that's kind of old school, if anybody remembers Teflon, but you have to let things kind of slide off of you. It, you can't let all the negativity from sales beat you up too much. Yes. You know, so I, I used to keep a, 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 a checklist. Like I, I had a little, little post-it note or note that I would keep on the, on the board, counting down all the no's. And so I never counted the yeses. I would only count. I really count the nose. You know, that way I could see how many nos it took to get to a yes. Like, yeah, okay, and like there's actually a, there's actually a book out there I've read years ago, and it's called something like Getting to Know, you know. <clears throat> and it and it's about that concept of, you know, the, the more nos you have, the closer you get to a yes. Mm-hmm. And it's true to a point, but you don't want to you don't want to concentrate on no's. I mean, you want to be able to say, I want that yes. You know, <laughs> where is it? Because <laughs> then you kind of I've seen people go, I just got 20 no's today. I'm working great. And I'm like, did you get any yeses? Just one. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like setting an expectation for a no and you don't want to, you know, right. kind of build up yourself for a no. I'm curious, Chris, you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, early on in your sales career, you weren't very good. And I was wondering if you identified why you weren't good. And in what you did to make those changes? Well, I wasn't I wasn't highly enthused about the project, as we say. <laughs> when somebody uh, promises the moon and the stars, and then you uh, they throw you into the deep end of the pool, uh, it was it was tough, and it was a lot. It wasn't um, realistic in what they described the job as. So. You know, nobody said, hey, be careful when you go out to see these guys. They might be packing guns or, you know, that <laughs> kind of stuff. So it didn't happen a lot. I did have a couple of guns pulled on me. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, it, there again, well, I shouldn't say two. One of them was a threat to have a gun pulled on me, which was a funny story. If you want me to share that one with you real quickly. Uh, well, but, yeah, we have to hear this. Yeah, story. So <laughs> this yeah you, can't, so, you can't hear it like that. So this, this was, we were selling accident plans and they were horrible. And, um, so, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're just trying to find people who are home. And I found this uh, truck in front of a single wide trailer. And the truck was probably twice as big as the trailer. So I figured somebody was home. I, I knocked on the door and, and this guy came to the door. And we had these very distinctive binders we held. And people could spot us a mile away. And And I was working for a company. It was called Combined Insurance. And um, nobody called it that. They called it Combine for some reason. And uh, so he looked at me and he goes, you aren't with the combine, are you? Real, real scary. You know, he was, he was a big dude. (laughs) And I said, well, why do you ask? I knew not to say yes or no. I just said, well, why do you ask? And he said, well, I had a claim with them and they didn't um, pay it. And so if you're with them, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to go in my house and get my gun and shoot you. And I said, well, you know, what kind of claim did you have? He says, well, I had a ward on my foot. And I said, you know, I'm 23 years old, green and, you know, wet behind the ears and all that. And I said, well, you know, sir, um, Combine, pronouncing it the way he did, I said, Combine um, doesn't have that. We sell accident plans. That's not an accident. A ward is not an accident. And he goes, well, I I didn't mean to get a ward on my foot. (laughs) (laughs) And, And and I just was, you know, at that point, I was like, you know what? I, I'm not going to have a rational conversation with this young man. <laughs> so I just said, I think I hear my mommy call and I got my car and I just left. And uh, so, you know, you run into that. But 
anyway, so that's what um, that kind of, when you're just running into that a lot, it doesn't help things. I took that skill set that I learned from that job, though, how to cold call, how to talk to people, how to get my, my thoughts organized when I'm talking to people, and took that to office supply sales, where I was, it was more of a, a B2B sale. And, um, you know, calling on, I don't have a problem going to an office building and cold calling uh, offices compared to going to, you know, a neighborhood and beating on people's doors. They don't want you to come, you know, and, and the environment is completely different now. You really can't do that kind of thing anymore. It's not safe <laughs> for a lot of reasons. But yeah, so, I mean, the, the sales skills, the general basic skills are transferable. You can take them from one industry to another. You can take them from one, you know, uh, vocation or, or even use them in your personal life if you need to. So um, that's, you know, it's it's just, that's how I got out of that. I just had to get out of that company. And once I got out of there, I, w- I was good to go, you know, <laughs> Well, I think that that nails it too. You got to be in the right place and you got to, you know, like feel good about what you're selling and feel good about the company because it, it is, it's a lot about feeling and how you feel about things. So I'd like to touch on that a little bit too and various other items here. And I know we're talking sales. Greg always gets excited about this. So I, I, I won't talk much, Greg. I promise I'll let you do it. So <laughs> we'll be right back with more DIY for business. Thanks for listening and subscribing to DIY for Business, a part of the best business network and Electrocast Media. You can check out all the various podcasts that are a part of the network by heading over to Electrocast.com. That's actually like that's everything, all the different podcasts. It's really cool. Uh, please do go check that out. I encourage you to do so. See, I just did a little sales job there and um, applying skills that I learned yeah. somewhere else. I don't know. Is that sales or marketing? I think that was sales. <laughs> well, for Dave, for Dave line there. podcast, we're going to count it as sales. Okay, perfect. perfect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had mentioned right right before we left about just liking where you are and, and being okay with that, because so much of this is about your your mental state, right? Like how you how you feel. At least it was for me. Do Do you agree with that? Oh yeah, yeah. It's all mental. I mean, everything we do in sales is mental. It's it's a game of psychological warfare sometimes you know just trying mm-hmm. to sit down with a client and find out where their pain points are and why they need your products and, or services and you know it it's just you know some people think of it as a you know a, a, a game you make a game out of it you know i'm gonna you know d- do 10 sales calls and see if i can get six of them to close or whatever they'll compete against themselves and they're competing against them, their coworkers, and lots of times you're, and then you have your other competition, you know, in the industry. So sales is, it, you know, it depends on what kind you're doing, of course, but it, it can be tough and it has to have a little bit of mental toughness and some levity and humor and humor, lots of humor. <laughs> Lots of humor, right? Let, let's emphasize the humor. Yeah, unless you unless you want to take one of the humors away, and some people will substitute that with alcohol. But I'll, I'll just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny about like keeping, uh, you know, being in the right mental state. I've seen it so often, and and, and we're all human beings, right? It, it, let's let's face it, we're all human beings. We all have emotions. We all have good days and bad days. But the best salespeople were able to compartmentalize what's going on in their personal lives, the bad stuff that we, we all got stuff going on in our lives. We everybody does, right? No matter what it looks like in social media, there's other stuff going on. <laughs> and I think the best salespeople were able to just stay, keep their head in the game and be present when they're ready to, you know, be in a presentation on the phone, whether it's in person, online nowadays. They were all present and their head was in the right space to make the sale, right? To have the conversation, to be present and really listen, have active listening. And I feel that the the people that struggle with sales, they, they, they're they not in it. You know, they don't have that right mindset and they're not, you know, they let the other stuff affect them too much. What do you, what do you feel about that? Well, it's it's easy to do. It's easy to get 
distracted in that sense when you've got, you know, family issues or, you know, other things going on in your life. And, um, but the, like you said, when you're compartment, compartmentalizing it, that's a big word. It and, is. Um, I had a tough yeah. time with it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but when you're doing that and you, and you get your head in the game and you're just focused, I, it, you know, the, the, the thing that I've learned o- over the years the most is, is uh, detachment to a sense. And I don't know if you've ever read, there's a book out there called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. I think it's a Deepak Chopra book or something, but um, he talks about detachment and how you just, I use that a lot because it really helps you say, you know what, I'm going to help this person. I'm going to give this person the best service the best ideas that I can help them. I'm going to counsel them to find the thing that's in their budget. But you know what? At the end of the day, if they don't buy, I'm going to wipe my hands clean and move on to the next one. You can't sit there and just dwell on, you know, why didn't that guy buy from me? Or why didn't that lady return my phone calls? I really have to have that little sense of detachment there that says, you know what? I'm still going to be good either way. And you know, and part of that is knowing that you've got a full pipeline and you've got a little confidence in yourself and you know that you're going to be going to the next networking event and have a few more contacts that you're going to pick up and things like that. So it's always activity. But knowing when I'm talking to you that I may not sell you and the odds are in, in my insurance industry, for instance, we have what we call 1031 for every 10 appointments you set, three people, will, for every 10 contacts you meet, three people will talk to you and set an appointment and one will buy. So if that's the case, I'm going to have to just make sure that I've got those other nine people lined up and ready to go and the next 10 and the next 10. And by doing that sales process, and it's there again, it's all on, under the big umbrella heading of, of activity, then you've got people to talk to and you don't feel that pressure on yourself. I know that I'm going to be helping somebody that will see the value in what I'm doing. And that's where I can keep going. But if you don't buy, I'm okay. I'll still, you know, it's not going to be the the last day I'll be in sales. So it's just that mindset. Um, I love helping people. That's why I like insurance. You know, the first time I ever delivered a claim check to somebody, that's when it hit me. You know, I was like, this is what we really do. We don't, yeah, I'm out selling and I'm having to play the little mind games and pin people down for appointments and things like that. But when it's all said and done, I'm selling them money. And if they want to buy it, that's great. If not, I can find somebody else. There's, it's like dating, you know, there's other fish in the sea sometimes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's a... it's, it's easier to do that when you're not, you know, like I, I'm going to, I'll just dive into the personal thing here of like when I first started my business, right. It was difficult to walk away from a sale that I didn't get and be okay with it. It's like, ah, oh, I really needed that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've got, I've got rent, I've got, you know, legal fees. I've got this, I've got that, I get, you know, all the different things that, that I, I knew all the, 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 the money coming in. It was so hard to walk away from that. So it, it sounds easy, you know, to say, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to walk away and just be okay. But it's, it's pretty hard when you, when you first start running a business. Oh, yeah, it's, it's terrible. And I had, you know, I've had, when I first was selling insurance, um, you know, there were people that would just jerk me around and I kept going back to them because you're just trying to find somebody, you know, you're desperate at that point. And, um, you know, you have what, what we call uh, commission breath, you know, they can mm-hmm. smell it coming off of you, <laughs> so, right. Right. but you know, that you, you end up sorting uh, your clients into the good clients and the bad clients and the ones that don't buy anything from you at all. And honestly, I think some people put the bad clients on the bottom. Um, I think the ones that don't buy from you are the, on the bottom of the list. It's just my personal preference, but if I'm going to have to sort people into groups and go, here's my A clients, my B clients, C clients, whatever, you you have to figure out how you how many times you're going to go to the well before they finally 
you realize they're just not going to buy from you. And you could have been spending that time more wisely looking for, for someone else. And, um, you know, I talk about that in my book a little bit and, and having to, you know, go, look, I'm going to have to fire you as a client, <laughs> not mm-hmm. the other yeah. way around. Right. It happens. There's a few I've had to let go just because I just don't have the time to, to babysit, you know, sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. And they have to, they have to respect your time and everything too. I mean, they, you know, it's a business, and they have businesses. Mm-hmm. I, I, I have a business, and you know, I'm not going to call someone up at ten o'clock at night and ask them to, um, you know, file a claim form or anything. It, it, they understand that, so you kind of set the parameters at the outset and let them know who you're dealing with. And, and of course, the nice thing about being self-employed is you deal with who you want to deal with in yeah. most respects. You know, so. I don't have to, um, you know, if somebody calls me up and says, hey, I want you to sell me this right now, I don't don't necessarily have to, uh, especially if it looks questionable and, you know, those kinds of things. All right. Uh, You know, I kind of want to ask this question of Greg, too, but we we do have to take a short break here. So uh, I've I've got a little question for you, Greg. I'm ready. I'm ready when we come back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right. Thanks for listening uh, to DIY for Business. As I mentioned earlier, part of the Best Business Network. Let's have an opportunity here to go check out some of those other uh, podcasts. Go check out the website while you're listening to these commercials. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to DIY for Business, a part of the Best Business Network and Electrocast Media. Hopefully during the break there, you checked out the uh, website over at electrocast.com and saw all these amazing podcasts. But hopefully you stayed listening to this one. I, I realize when I direct people away to other podcasts, they may just go listen to those. And that's that's not, I mean, it's cool that you're listening to them, but you got to finish this one first. I yeah. mean, add it to your and, playlist. And you got to hear whatever question Russ is going to hit me with. Exactly. I, I actually... I left- Juiced up with some more caffeine during the break. That's good. And I'm ready. That's good. I'm ready. All right. All right. Uh, so, okay. So you, Greg, have been doing sales for I don't know how long. Like, how, like <laughs> since birth? I don't know. You've been doing sales oh, for a long goodness. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you are always so positive. You're always like you've always got a smile. You're always happy. Dancing. How do you? you you're always dancing. Exactly. Yeah. How do you do that? In the sales world, like how do you stay so positive uh, in in doing sales when you when you know that you're gonna get rejection on occasion? Yeah, it's 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 an interesting question because it's the surface smile, right, and then it's the inner smile. And mm-hmm. sometimes people feel that okay, you can't always be happy, and then it's true. You're, I'm not always happy, but in a sales sense, I am because. I always look at it as a challenge, as an opportunity, as a puzzle. We've mentioned it before. I love trying to solve puzzles. And I think each sales opportunity is a puzzle. How do I figure this out? I know there's there's an opportunity here. I know that you know if you have a good product or a good service to provide, this prospect could probably use it. It's just that they don't really see why they need to use it yet. And it's a, it's a you know, just a a puzzle to figure out what is their need and how do we fill that need and how do I get that uncovered? And as long as I keep it like that mindset, it's fun for me. So the inner smile is always there because I'm always trying to figure it out. And to Chris's point earlier, you know, about time and, you know, sometimes you have to fire the client what I find is that, okay, once they say no, they may say no again, but a lot of times it's timing. It's timing of when you talk to them, what's going on in their lives, what's going on in their business, what's going on in, in their marriage, whatever. The timing always uh, plays a factor into whether they're saying yes or no. So sometimes, even though they're saying no a couple of times, maybe the timing just wasn't right for that conversation. For for me, you know, the salesperson to try to uncover the need at that point, and maybe that's the third time point. the timing would be right, right, Chris? That's a that's an excellent point, and I'll tell you a great story along those lines. Was um, years ago, I, I was just cold calling some businesses one day, and uh, met a guy, and he was a about forty five years old, confirmed bachelor, and um, 
just, you know, good guy. And we talked and, and he just didn't need anything. He didn't feel he needed anything. And I, and I just told him, I said, well, is it okay if I just, you know, put your card in my file and touch base with you and, you know, from time to time. And he was like, sure. And sure enough, I called him about a year later and his whole world had changed. His uh, brother-in-law, his brother had died and he was now stuck with a, uh, well, I said they stuck, but he was now the uh, guardian of a 25 year old special needs child. And um, so, you know, now he needed life insurance and things like that. And he hadn't thought about it because he had just been overwhelmed with the whole process at that point. And um, so, yeah, you know, it's just a matter of it's, it wasn't a good time the first time check back in that it might be a good time again later on, just like Greg said. Yeah. There's always the line too, between like being persistent and being annoying. Yeah, that's not what there's such a fine line between dating and stalking, you know? <laughs> um, there is that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there again, I asked him permission, you know, hey, is it okay if I, if I give you a call from time to time? That's the, you know, if I hadn't done that, he would have gone like, hey, who's that guy in the bushes, you know, with the binoculars or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I mean, you ask first and just say, is it okay if I just put you in my tickler file and drop, or is it okay if I drop you an email from time to time, put you on my email list or things like that. Just a lot of that is just learning to, uh, keep yourself top of mind because, you know, people like, for instance, I have a YouTube channel and I have very, I don't have a lot of subscribers. And if you guys feel sad, you can subscribe and help a guy out but um (laughs) but i actually had a i just made these little short youtube videos and one was my cat in a hammock and just laying there and i just said something stupid like you know oh don't you want to have the peace of mind of this cat in a hammock you know whatever and about two weeks later um you know the phone rang and it was a lady that saw it and she said i i need life insurance i hadn't thought about Hmm. it and um, and when I asked her well, what what made you think of that all of a sudden, because I'd known her for years, she goes, "I was a cat in the hammock. That's what got me." <laughs> and I just never in a million years would have thought that was the thing. <laughs> yeah. See if you if you learn one thing from this episode, it's it's cats work on the internet. You know, cats, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and it's it, yeah, and all she's doing is just laying there. She loves the hammock, so uh, you know. So. <laughs> I've made uh, some other videos as well, like the, uh, can zombies get uh, disability insurance and things like that. And oh, nice! And, uh, you know, so those are on our. That's on my Surf Financial Brokers uh, YouTube channel. But yeah, I mean, so it's, it's a lot of that is, you know, even though you didn't get the sale right then and there, keep in contact um, and and make it easy for yourself. But connect with them on LinkedIn or Twitter or. YouTube or ask them to subscribe to your email or whatever that you're going to constantly be filling information out there and getting to them anyway and let them know that you're still around. You weren't just that fly by night person, you know, so that helps. <laughs> I think also the question there with the zombies is can they collect on their life insurance? I mean, well, they're still and this walking was, around. Well, uh, this was the thing was, um, <laughs> Yeah, we told everybody in this. I mean, you can watch the video. It, it's only me sitting on my back porch. I, I filmed it at like six o'clock in the morning one morning when I just couldn't think of anything else to do. And uh, but I, I talked about how the paramed nurse would come out and do the exam and would probably find that death was a pre existing condition. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, there is that, that yeah, right? Yeah, and, th- and then the funny one was when I did the uh, because zombies get disability insurance. I actually called some of my insurance carriers and asked some underwriters. And of course, most of them just thought I was an idiot and, you know, told me, <laughs> told me to get back to work. And then one lady actually got into the conversation a little bit and she goes, well, you know, first of all, they'd have to have a job they can go back to. <laughs> you know? yeah. She's like really getting into it. And then she told me that she thought that um, zombies did have jobs to get back to because she had been to the DMV and seen them. So uh, that was. You got to think that the zombies are actors, right? Because they're on every show you see on television yeah, exactly, or every movie, right? so there's, they got to be working. Well, yeah, but are they actors pretending to be zombies, or are they zombie actors? And that's 
Well, that's you know. how I feel about Kevin Costner. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. Did I say that? <laughs> Kevin. I, oh, I, my I goodness. goodness. It was just. He's, he's a method. I love you, he's Kevin. A, he's a method zombie. <laughs> 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 okay, I, I got I got okay. a somewhat serious question. Okay, because we've all heard the term, you know, in sales term ABC, right? Always be closing, right? Mm-hmm. And people are out there, they're networking, they're doing their thing, they're you know, they're you know, like Russ says, I'm always smiling, but that's an authentic thing. I'm always smiling. I'm a happy person. But sometimes, do people have a perception like, oh, he's a salesperson. He's just trying to sell me something. He's just trying to close me. Even when I'm, you know, somebody could just be having a regular conversation and, you know, they feel like sales, there's a negative stigma about salespeople. Like they're always trying to sell something. They're always trying to network. They're always trying to find an angle. Do you find that happening, Chris, in your life or in, in people that you know in, in the sales field? And how do you get around that? You have to, um, first of all, it goes back to that whole commission breath thing and <laughs> figuring out, you know, I, if you can read people's body language, you can, you you know, I can tell uh, sometimes when people think that that's all I'm talking about is you know, insurance or whatever. Hey, I, hey, Greg, I just met you five minutes ago. Let me tell you this awesome new product I have. Um, instead of having a real conversation with you and the way you avoid all that is to have a real conversation. I don't, I'm not here to talk about me and my products. I want to talk about you and let me find out what, and the more I get you to talk, then I'm going to find an opening in there. Um, if I have enough arrows in my quiver, you know what I'm saying? So if I've got, um, 10 different products instead of one and I can have a conversation with you and just get you to keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Sooner or later, you're going to say something like, yeah, you know, um, you know, I, I really am concerned about if I got chronically ill and I needed to some, you know, pay the expenses of long-term care. Sooner or later, you're going to give me that opening and I'm going to gently, very subtly and subliminally, no, I'm just kidding on the last part, um, <laughs> how, to, how, to, how to open that door and, and say, you know what, I think I might have a solution for that problem. But I don't have to go in and, you know, people love talking about themselves. And that's unless they're introverts, but, you know, you can usually get them to open up and talk about their interest and what keeps them up at night and have, a, have good broad-based questions. Every time you see them, you don't have to uh, try to sell them something just to, Hey, what's going on in your life? Tell me what's going on. I'm, I, I'm interested. That's how you avoid being that salesy guy. You know, you don't want to, um, just always be telling somebody how great something you have is or whatever, because nobody cares. Honestly, they want to know what they, what you, what you can do for me. Mm-hmm. And if I can, and if I can say, Hey, what can I do for you? One of the things I, I say to people all the time, and, and this is, I've taught this, uh, actually, I, I taught a whole class of Toastmasters this one, is whenever I, I'm done with a conversation, I very purposely say, um, hey, if you need anything, let me know. And that's all I say. Uh, you know, it's nice talking to you. If you need anything, let me know. They never call me. I mean, nobody's going to call me from jail at three in the morning that I just met at a chamber of commerce after hours, you know, but they just get that in their head and they go, Oh man, he told me if I needed something to call him. And oddly enough, you'll get phone calls every now and then, you know, Hey, you know, you told me to give you a call. I have an insurance question or I have a question about this or that. And that's all you got to do. Just, just be honest with people. Be nice. Don't constantly brag about yourself and your business and just talk about them. That's what, that's what's important. Um, mm-hmm. When it's all said and done, that's, that's what counts. And I then some of my... when the commissions come around, then it's about me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I think some of my best conversations like sales meetings have just been conversations that are very little about the product sometimes. And just more about just getting to know the person, them getting to know me. And then, you know, it's like it's yeah. building that that trust and rapport, and that's that's yeah. Now every yeah, once in a while you'll get know. the you'll get the you get the person that'll say, "Well, I don't deal with you unless I know what kind of car you're driving, and you uh-huh. know where you're driving, and, and you know if you're lucky enough to say 
the car that he approves of. <laughs> but if you're like, I'm right. driving a Kia Rio, then they look at you like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I've had people ask me all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And I, they, 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 they'll find reasons to buy from you. They'll find reasons not to buy from you. And they've got a million. You know, they oh, don't yeah, like your, definitely. They don't like your facial hair or the way you talk or your car or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so. so, Chris, we've talked about the book. Where do people go to find this book? It is on Amazon. You can just look up uh, You're Going to Be Great at This, or you can just call, uh, I'm sorry, spell my name, Chris Castanis, which is C A S T A N E S, or you can go to chriscastanis.com. Um, and there's links to the Amazon page there, but it's all on Amazon. And um, like I said, it's a bit, it's PG-13 a little bit. I had one lady apparently wasn't aware that I have a little salty language and texted me about <laughs> after she bought it and so was like, oh my goodness, this is profane. And then, I, and then, and then I'll tell you a funny story. I, I donated a copy to one of these little library things we have here in town where the, you know, there's just free books and you take them oh, yeah. and return them back. And, and I um, got a message on Facebook one day from a pastor who had picked it up and he loved it and he gave he sent me this very long thing and he said he said I even I even approve of your language. Oh, nice. <laughs> Pastor approved, so we're, yeah, we're okay. So, yeah, no, I'm I'm okay. It's PA. It's PA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you and I uh, hope you guys have a good good uh, rest of your week and if you need anything let me know. Oh, I like that ending. I like the close. All right. Gotta Take love care, it. <laughs> and thank you for listening, subscribing, and reviewing DIY for Business, a part of the Best Business Network and Electric House Media. The subjects that we cover on the podcast are selected with the goal of helping your business grow. All of the information provided is opinion-based, and you might want to consult a professional to discuss your exact business situation. Greg and I want your company to succeed, and we are happy to take your questions. We're also love to hear your suggestions for future episodes. So you can just head over to our website, diyforbusinesspodcast.com. Uh, the link is in the podcast description. But if you head over there, you can suggest shows. You can ask us for feedback. You can do all kinds of stuff over there. Also, see all of our past episodes. We thank you again for listening and subscribing to DIY for Business, where you are not alone. So we love the curse of the lake house. We, we love, love the, the curse. Welcome to the curse of the lake house. I am not a witch. Really well written. Keeps you guessing. I really like the ending. Peter, otters mate for life too. Otters find the otter they belong with and they mate for life too. The curse of the lake house. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Electric acid. Welcome to Get Real with Dr. Renee. With her extensive experience as a double CEO, therapist, and renowned treatment specialist, Dr. Calvert's approach to recovery and emotional freedom is unique and diverse. Dr. Calvert's innovative and unfiltered perspective sheds light on the importance of being human and encourages guests and listeners to get real. Joined by Bindi Hyde, producer, coach, and founder of Ethical Change Agency on a mission to spread collective change, understanding that it starts with us. It's time to get real.